Chapter 13. All right. I want to know more about the process. What's the best way to keep it comfortable during the pregnancy? Sean inquired. For the next ten minutes, the vet explained the process in detail and gave him a cat pregnancy guide in the end. Well, a pregnant cat must watch its nutrition intake. Your cat is quite weak to begin with, thus miscarriage might happen easily. It's best if you hire someone to look after it. Sean was at a loss for words. Was it a pet or a hard nut they were dealing with here? For some reason, he was suddenly reminded of Catherine's exceptional cooking skills. It occurred to him that he might have been too rude to her just now. Right, he should probably stop bringing up the topic of her leaving the house when he returned later. Back at Jadeite Bay, he opened the door and turned the lights on. Something did not feel right. The door of the guest room was open, and there was no one in sight. He could not find a single garment of women's clothing in there. Catherine had left. His eyebrows twitched into a frown. Fudge meowed lazily in his arms. She glanced around the room before lowering her head in disappointment. The man was frustrated but thought that her departure might be for the best. They should not get too involved in each other's life anyway. He could make it up to her with a larger compensation on the day of their divorce. As for Fudge, well, he could always hire a sitter. 10 a.m. Catherine woke up from the couch feeling groggy. After checking into the room last night, she discovered lots of hair on the bed. The bedsheets looked unwashed at first glance. She was a clean freak, thus she ended up falling asleep on the couch instead. Freya rang when she was about to freshen up. Babe, aren't you living with your husband? How did you end up in a budget hotel? How do you know about this? There was a hint of frustration in her voice. Come on, everyone is talking about it on the group chat. That mean woman, Janet Campbell, even brought up your past. She told everyone that you've been chased out of the Jones household because your elder sister is back. All those hypocrites who were envious of your status as the young lady are now mocking you relentlessly. Oh, she mumbled. Janet Campbell was a daughter from another affluent household in Melbourne. The two of them used to be classmates in school. However, Janet had always been jealous of Catherine for her beautiful looks and outstanding academic achievements. Hence, they had never been the closest of friends. It was not unusual for her to ruin Catherine's reputation when the latter was already in a bad position. Aren't you furious? Freya asked, feeling annoyed. What's happening? You've never stepped foot into a hotel with less than five stars. Things have changed. My dad has suspended all of my cards and I don't have much on me. Last night, Sean chased me out of the house. Why didn't you come to me? Catherine, you're such a fool. Tell me the address. Forty minutes later, Freya showed up, looking as if she was in a haste. She felt sorry for her friend after glancing around the small and dodgy room. There was even a stash of tart cards slipped through the door by prostitutes looking for business. Come on, leave this place right away and stay at mine. No, you have a boyfriend. Plus, it's not a good idea for the long term. I plan to rent a place. Catherine shook her head to refuse the kind offer. After giving it some consideration, Freya agreed. That's not a bad idea. Ethan came to my place again last night looking for you. He's seriously so annoying. Catherine felt her throat tightening up at the sound of this name. There was a time when the man would back her up on everything. However, she felt utterly disheartened upon remembering what he said yesterday. He's the last person I wish to see right now. Me too! Freya nodded, but soon a confused expression washed over her face. By the way, you're now a married woman, so why did Sean chase you out of the house in the middle of the night? Catherine forced out a bitter smile before briefly explaining what happened. Freya felt deeply for her best friend. He must be insane. You're his other half by law. Are you less important to him than a cat? That's not at all surprising, is it? Freya hesitated. Um, well, it was your decision to marry him anyway. Catherine remained silent. 
she regretted her choice. A sigh escaped Freya's lips. <sighs> right, let's go get some food. I know a good place where the food reminds one of home. We can start looking for a house after taking care of our bellies. Oh, why don't we invite Cindy Turner too? While on their way to the restaurant, Catherine called Cindy. Freya and I are heading out for a meal. It's been a while since we last met. Do you want to tag along? Ah, oh, I'm in the middle of a photo shoot. Sorry. It's all right. Let's do it some other time. She's becoming more famous each day. She wouldn't be who she is today if you hadn't written and composed for her back then. Freya commented after the call ended. We're still friends, after all. It's normal that she's busy. Grapefruit Restaurant was the up-and-coming restaurant that had recently opened in Melbourne. There was a spacious courtyard designed in the middle of the restaurant. Luxurious cars were found outside of the restaurant. This was a place that only the really wealthy could afford. The two of them parked the car and headed into the restaurant. A few familiar faces entered their sight the minute they stepped foot into that place, including Rebecca, Janet, as well as... Cindy! Freya called out to the woman. Cindy, who was wearing sunglasses, revealed an awkward smile. Annoyed, Freya approached the women with Catherine. You told us over the phone not long ago that you're busy working on a photo shoot, yet here you are with these women. Do you know who they are? Janet is Catherine's worst enemy and Rebecca is the two-faced doxy who stole her boyfriend. Who are you calling two-faced? Watch your tone. Janet stepped forward to push Freya rudely. Catherine reached out to catch her friend as she glanced at the group of women with contempt. She would not have come here if she knew this was going to happen. However, she could not deny that Cindy had truly disappointed her. Cindy, why are you hanging out with them? It's one thing with Rebecca, but you should know better than anyone about my history with Janet. Why? Janet linked her arm with Cindy as a smug look spread across her face. Do you really have to ask? Not only have you lost the right to the Jones family's inheritance, but you've also resorted to staying in a cheap budget hotel. A person like you doesn't deserve to be friends with Cindy. She's the most popular singer at the minute, whereas you're only a phoenix that has fallen worse than a hen. Catherine narrowed her eyes at Cindy. I want to hear it from your mouth. Chapter 14 Cindy took off her sunglasses to throw a sarcastic glance at Catherine. It's not a bad thing that she bumped into me today, as I'm tired of turning you down with excuses as well. Honestly, it's your fault that you don't know where you stand. Must you make me spell things out for you before you finally get it? Catherine felt like a failure as she studied this beautifully made-up face in front of her eyes. Both Ethan and Cindy only chose to be nice to her before this because she was next in line as the heir of the Jones family. Cindy, are you being serious? Freya shouted. Did you forget how you were bullied by Janet in the past or how Kathy helped you with the songs? Stop trying to restrain me using the past. She and I aren't from the same world. Cindy cut her off nervously. Freya, take my advice. Some people only bring you down. It's best to stay away from them. Shut up! Friends are supposed to support each other without hoping to get something in return. Don't you understand that? The fury in Freya's tone was unmistakable. Forget it. There's no point arguing with them. Catherine grabbed Freya's arm, her face showing no emotion. We're here to have a meal. Let's go. Freya glared murderously at the three women before being led away by Cindy. Kathy, has that woman lost her mind or what? You've been nothing but a great friend to her. Cindy wouldn't be where she is today without your help. Has she forgotten how Janet used to bully her? I regret not realising Cindy's true colours before this. Catherine lowered her gaze to the ground. Her delicate and pretty face remained nonchalant. Kathy, aren't you angry? Don't you want to criticise her? Of course I do, but what good would it do? The corners of her lips twitched into a self-deprecating smile. 
there was a hint of sorrow that flashed across her eyes. But this is the reality of things. Look, both my birth parents are completely disregarding me, while Ethan, who basically grew up with me, has abandoned me. I'm jobless, homeless, and unloved. Cindy is not the only one treating me like this. Freya looked at her friend, feeling both sorry and angry. My dad said it himself. My presence in Summit Group is solely to provide assistance to Rebecca. I can leave the company if I refuse to accept fate. A pitiful smile spread across her face. Obviously, I didn't want that, so I left. Freya tried to cheer her up. Stop it! You'll definitely shine brighter elsewhere with your capabilities. At the same time, a server approached them. Excuse me, miss. Uh, do you have a reservation? Yes. I spoke with manager Lorenz over the phone earlier. Freya gestured to the manager standing by the reception. Manager Lorenz walked toward them. Miss Lynch, I've reserved a private room for you. Allow me to show you the way. At the same time, Janet's voice rang behind them. Manager Lorenz, I've brought a couple of friends with me today. Do you have any private rooms left? The manager seemed surprised. His eyes sparkled when he noticed Cindy among the women. Could this possibly be the singer Cindy Turner? The latter smiled sweetly. Manager Lorenz, you're certainly great with faces. I told Cindy that the food here is amazing. Her schedule is free tonight, so here we are. Janet said with a grin. Manager Lorenz was overwhelmed by the situation. Miss Turner has a wonderful voice, and I'm a fan. It's a shame that we're fully booked tonight. Didn't you say that you reserved one for them? Janet threw a glance at Catherine out of the corner of her eyes. Freya was instantly filled with rage. We reserved the room beforehand. Get yourself a booking if you want to dine here. Manager Lorenz was at a loss of what to do. Both of them were young ladies from the affluent families of Melbourne. It would not be wise to offend either of them. The corners of Janet's lips formed a faint smile as she pointed at Rebecca. Manager Lorenz, I don't have to tell you who Cindy is, but you probably have no idea about this lady over here. Her name is Rebecca Jones, and her father is the president of Summit Building Design Group. She soon to be the heir of the company. As for that friend of Miss Lynch, she's only but an unimportant assistant to Miss Jones over here. This took the manager by surprise. The Summit Group was among the top 300 successful companies within the country. It was a name that everyone in Melbourne was familiar with. Besides, Janet also came from an affluent family. In comparison, Freya and her friend seemed to be on the weaker end. Freya retaliated. An unimportant assistant? The one over there is but a shameless thief who likes stealing things belonging to others. There was a slight change on Rebecca's face. Janet stared at the man with a grin on her face. Do we have a room now, Manager Lorenz? Yes, absolutely. Manager Lorenz decided within seconds. Miss Lynch, I just remembered that I agreed to reserve a room for Miss Campbell before you... Uh, uh, please come again next time. Catherine narrowed her eyes, fuming. Lorenz, do you take us as fools? Freya rolled up her sleeves. Do you think you can bully me? One phone call to my elder brother right now and your restaurant will shut its doors within seconds. Manager Lorenz, don't worry. We'll take full responsibility. Rebecca grinned. The manager felt confident with the support. Miss Lynch, I am just an employee. However, you can't threaten me by pulling rank. Please leave right away and stop disrupting the customers. What if I don't? If I can't have my meal here, then no one else can too. She picked up a vase within her reach and smashed it to the ground. Emotions chased across the manager's face in quick succession. Get him out of here, he instructed the servers nearby. Before Catherine could react, 
both she and Freya were forcefully pushed out to the entrance by several strong men. The servers were particularly rude to her. As she was wearing high heels, she lost her balance and fell to the ground. In spite of that, the servers pretended not to notice and continued dragging her out of the restaurant before she could get to her feet. Catherine felt as if she was nothing more than a sack. Her arms and knees did not feel like hers anymore. Let her go. A man's indifferent voice rang behind them. Her heart skipped a beat. Could it possibly be?